Hello friends, now we are in the second part of the lecture on high pressure processing of food. In the part 1, we studied process principles and technological aspects. In the second part now, let us see how the high pressure processing influences the constituents of food and ultimately its quality. Towards the latter part of the lecture, we will also see some of the product and process applications of high pressure processing. You see that uh, depending upon the process applications in general to extend the self life of the food materials, we need to destroy the microorganisms or enzymes or such other causative agents which result in the spoilage of food. But in optimizing the processes, we must see that the process when it results or the process needed for the inactivation of microorganisms or destruction of uh, microorganisms or enzymes etcetera it should not result in the significant changes or reduction in the quality attributes so, that becomes important aspect. So, we must see or we must analyze the effect of high pressure process parameters on sensory characteristics of the food, texture, color, its effects on in functional characteristic functionality and of course, microbes and enzymes we have already seen in the earlier class that high pressure processing can cause inactivation of parasites, plant cells, vegetative microorganism, spores of bacteria or fungi, even enzymes are selectively inactivated by high pressure processing. Confirmation of the macromolecules may change during high pressure processing depending upon the process conditions, particularly depending upon the pressure and other factors. Small molecules, however, such as color and flavor, etcetera, are generally not affected, that is, they remain unaffected or less affected. So, we see the first effect on the pigment and colors. Again, several researchers have worked and they have studied the influence of varying ranges of pressure, temperature, and other like acidity, etcetera, and they have analyzed their effect on major pigments present in food like chlorophyll, carotenoids lycopene, anthocyanins etcetera and observations are made these are present in this table you can read it and understand and that the among the chlorophylls A and B that they have different uh, stability towards pressure and temperature. Of course, the significant reduction they say that in the chlorophyll content of high pressure treated juice in broccoli. However, in the case of green beans, minimum degradation was reported. Similarly, the carotenoids are found to be pressure stable, they are little more stable to pressure, even the pressure induced isomerization was also obtained in certain case like for example, lycopene in tomato and anthocyanins also they were more or less influenced by the high pressure conditions. But you can see here in this picture on an average we can say that yes this actual appeal or final color of the food product is not much influenced or is not much disturbed during high pressure processing as you could see here 
these are the colors of salami before and after high pressure processing salmon before and high pressure processing of course in the salmon there is a significant change in the color alright but in the case of milk strawberry not much change even the cheese before and after there is no change however chicken beef and pork meats you can see there is a change in the color significant change in the color before and after processing okay so that means that depending upon the characteristics composition of the food material the extent of pressure applied temperature during the high pressure processing and other factor pH etcetera obviously these influence the color to a less or great extent. Effect on texture that is the physical structure of most high moisture products remains almost unchanged because very nil or no shear forces are generated by pressure in such foods in high moisture foods. Texture of gas containing products of course, the foods which have air pockets or which have gas in it may be changed during high pressure processing mainly because of the gas displacement as well as liquid infiltration. Physical shrinkage can occur due to mechanical collapse of air pockets. Shape distortion may be related to the anisotropic behavior. There are however, minimal or no permanent change in textural characteristics in food not containing air voids. The effect of uh, sensory attributes of the food during high pressure processing. The high pressure treated sausages were considered more cohesive and less firm than heat treated sausages. High pressure treatment could preserve delicate sensory attributes of avocado and assured a reasonable safe and stable shelf life. High pressure treatment of meat, fish however, resulted in the increased oxidation and this probably due to the release of the metal ion during high pressure treatment from the myoglobin or hemoglobin. And this metal ions which are released during high pressure, they may cause auto oxidation or oxidation of the fat and if not controlled they can negatively affect the color and flavor of these products. But the in nutshell we can say that that will depend again on the type of the material, material characteristics, extent of pressure applied, temperature etcetera which will influence some researchers again lot of reports are available on this aspect in the literature some researchers here they have studied that the a comparative sensory study of heat treated and high pressure treated sausages and that is the among that uh, different uh, judges they used they found that uh, pressurized or high pressure treated sausages were liked by more judges uh, in both in 5 minute treatment high pressure treatment as well as 15 minutes high pressure treatment in both the cases large number of judges preferred high pressure processed product in comparison to the heat processed product as far as the its sensory effects are concerned. Also there is a self life comparison of orange juice was made based on the changes in the sensory characteristics of the juice during storage and it was found again that is even the temperature ranging from 0 to 15 degree Celsius that is the high pressure treated juices were stable for longer period than those of the thermally pasteurized juices. So, this again indicate the effect of uh, high pressure processing 
आ पैरामीटर ऑन सेंसरी एस्ट्रीब्यूट में इन बी इन्फ्लुएंस्ड आर मे डिपेंड अपॉन द कंडीशन प्रिवेलिंग इन दिस गेज नाउ इन दिस लाइट द प्रेसर डी नेचुरेशन यू हैव अर्लियर सीन इन द लेक्चर पार्ट वन दैट इज द इंजाइम्स इंजाइम्स आर ऑल्सो बेसिकली प्रोटीन इन नेचर सो दे गेट डी नेचर विद द हाई प्रेसर ट्रीटमेंट सो दिस डी नेचुरेशन ऑफ प्रोटीन्स एज ए फंक्शन ऑफ प्रेसर इज ए कॉम्प्लेक्स फिनामिना एंड इट डिपेंड्स मेनली ऑन द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ प्रोटीन रेंज ऑफ द प्रेसर अप्लाइड टेम्परेचर एंड ऑफ कोर्स पी एच ऑफ द सिस्टम इन दिस फिगर यू कैन सी दैट द प्रेसर एंड टेम्परेचर इफेक्ट ऑन डी नेचुरेशन ऑफ द प्रोटीन ऑन एक्स एक्सिस टेम्परेचर इज प्लाटेड वाई एक्सिस प्रेसर इन मेगा पास्कल एंड सी दैट इन मोस्ट ऑफ द फूड दैट इज अराउंड टू हंड्रेड फिफ्टी मेगा पास्कल दैट इज इट गोज विद द होल टाइम्स अलाइट दैट इज दिस इज द लाइन वेयर डेल्टा जी वैल्यू इज जीरो दैट इज बिफोर दैट द प्रोटीन इज प्रजेंट इन इट्स नेटिव स्टेट एंड बियॉन्ड दैन दैट इज मीन्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल दैट इज इफ द फूड प्रोटीन इज एक्सपोज टू ए प्रेसर ऑफ अराउंड थ्री हंड्रेड मेगा पास्कल आर सो एट थर्टी डिग्री सेल्सियस टेम्परेचर राइट इट्स मे बी डी नेचर सो दैट इंडिकेट्स ऑलिगोमरिक प्रोटीन्स आर डिसोसिएटेड बाई रिलेटिवली लो प्रेसर वेर एज सिंगल चेन प्रोटीन डी नेचुरेशन अकर्स एट प्रेसर ग्रेटर दैन थ्री हंड्रेड मेगा पास्कल प्रेसर इंड्यूस्ड डी नेचुरेशन इज समाइम रिवर्सिबुल दैट इज ड्यूरिंग डी कंप्रेशन आर वेन द प्रेसर इज रिलीज फ्रॉम द सिस्टम वेन मटेरियल कम्स टू इट्स ओरिजिनल स्टेट देयर मे बी री एयर नेचुरेशन द प्रोटीन माइट टेक्स देयर ओरिजिनल सेप्स एंड ऑफ कोर्स दिस री नेचुरेशन आफ्टर प्रेसर रिलीज इट मे टेक ए लॉन्ग टाइम डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द अगेन टाइप ऑफ द प्रोटीन एंड अदर कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स द इफेक्ट ऑफ हाई प्रेसर ऑन फंक्शनैलिटी ऑफ द प्रोटीन हैज अगेन बी बीज स्टडीड बाई सेवरल रिसर्चर्स एंड लट ऑफ ऑब्जर्वेशंस हैव बीन मेड एंड दीज आर रिपोर्ट्स आर अवेलेबल इन द लिटरेचर डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द प्रेसर एंड टेम्परेचर समटाइम द फंक्शनैलिटीज आर इम्प्रूवड राइट एंड समटाइम द प्रेसर इफ इट इज वेरी हाई प्रेसर इट मे हैव सम एडवर्स इफेक्ट लाइक केस इन माइसेल इन मिल्क दे गेट डी स्टेबिलाईज एट फोर हंड्रेड मेगा पास्कल प्रेसर बैक बीटा लैक्टोग्लोबलिन इन मिल्क इफ द मिल्क इज प्रेसराइज एट फोर हंड्रेड फिफ्टी मेगा पास्कल फॉर फिफ्टीन मिनट्स इट्स सॉलिबिलिटी इज रिड्यूस्ड इन कंपेरिजन टू द अन प्रेसराइज और कंट्रोल मिल्क सिमिलरली मेट माओग्लोबिन डाइमराइजेशन अकर्स वेन मेट माओग्लोबिन ट्रीटेड एट ए कंपेरेटिवली हायर प्रेसर लाइक सेवन हंड्रेड फिफ्टी मेगा पास्कल फॉर ट्वेंटी मिनट्स इन द पी एच रेंज एज ऑफ सिक्स टू टेन एंड मैक्सिमम डाइमराइजेशन वॉज फाउंड एट इट्स आइसो इलेक्ट्रिक पी एच ओबलविमिन इन एग रिमेन्स फेयरली स्टेबल वेन दे आर प्रेसराइज एट फोर हंड्रेड मेगा पास्कल इन सोया प्रोटीन ए प्रेसर ऑफ थ्री हंड्रेड मेगा पास्कल फॉर टेन टू थर्टी मिनट्स वॉज फाउंड नेसेसरी टू इंड्यूस जिलेशन सोया मिल्क चेंज फ्रॉम ए लिक्विड स्टेट टू सॉलिड स्टेट आफ्टर ट्रीटमेंट एट फाइव हंड्रेड मेगा पास्कल फॉर थर्टी मिनट्स मीन्स दैट इज अंडर दिस कंडीशन द प्रोटीन्स आर कंप्लीटली कागुलेटेड दे आर प्रेसिपिटेटेड सो द वी कैन समराइज दैट इन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ दिस हाई प्रेसर प्रोसेस पैरामीटर्स ऑन वेरियस फंक्शनैलिटीज ऑफ द सिस्टम्स पर्टिकुलरली प्रोटीन्स एक्सेट्रा इट मे डिपेंड अपॉन द नेचर ऑफ द सिस्टम आर द प्रेसर अदर फैक्टर्स अवेलेबल सिमिलरली द इफेक्ट ऑफ हाई प्रेसर असेस ऑन द जिलेशन आर जेलिंग बिहेवियर ऑफ द फूड मटेरियल्स 
in the earlier class we have seen that the process of gel formation is the macroscopic consequence of protein denaturation and a molecular level and not only also it may be because of the changes in the microstructure of other bio macromolecules like polysaccharides etcetera. Gelation by high pressure treatment is attributed to mainly the decrease in the volume of protein. Egg oak when it was subjected to a pressure of around 400 mega Pascal for 30 minute at 25 degree Celsius, it forms a gel. At 500 mega Pascal, egg white gets partially coagulated and it becomes opaque. If the pressure is made little more, 600 mega Pascal, complete gelation of the protein takes place. So, this pressure induced gels of egg white possess a however natural flavor, it shows that there is no destruction of amino acids, rather they have the better digestibility when compared with the heat induced gel. The hardest gel formed by high pressure may be 500 mega Pascal treatment exhibit one sixth the strength of heat induced gel means that is the high pressure gels are comparatively softer than those of the heat induced gels. Effect of high pressure on starch gelatinization it is gelatinization may be stimulated by the increased temperatures of pressurization high pressure may also produce an upward shift in the gelatinization temperature of the starch by about 3 to 5 degree per 100 mega Pascal. Pressures higher than 150 mega Pascal do not further however enhance the gelatinization temperature. One very interesting thing is that, that pressure treated starches keep the granular structure intact and this gives a very even good application in the high pressure or pressure parboiling of the paddy and other materials starch containing materials. Similarly, the effect of uh, high pressure parameters on lipids that is peroxide value of the oil in high pressure treated cord muscle was increased with the increasing pressure and hold time. Means there is meat is treated with the high pressure, so oil its oxidation rate etcetera is increased. The in the presence of the muscle that is the oxidation reactions etcetera are accelerated at high pressure. However, when this uh, oil is extracted and it is subjected to the high pressure process cut comparatively lower increase in the oxidation that is they are the oils in their extracted form are comparatively more resistant to pressure than those in their materials in the muscles etcetera. So, after having studied the effect of high pressure on various constituents and quality of the food materials, let us now see that what are the possible application areas of high pressure processing. And as you see in this slide, the application is wide ranging, it can be applied for both for the product preparation for having a product with good functional and other characteristics as well as this can be applied for extension of the shelf life. So, for pasteurization, for sterilization, for texture modification, for bringing out in textural changes for example, in cheese, yogurts, yurmi etcetera or 
it can be used in specialty processes to improve the processes like freezing, thawing, pet crystallization, enhancing reaction kinetics, etc. The high pressure processing has a good potential for its application in tempering of the chocolate. You have seen its influence on the starch gelatinization. So, it can, it can be used for parboiling of the paddy, blanching of vegetables, tenderization of the meat. We have seen that effect of high pressure on proteins. So, the tenderization of particularly hard pieces of the meat cuts etcetera. Coagulation and texturization of fish and meat minces. When instant freezing and thawing, thawing is normally a slow process. So, it is rate of the thawing that is very rapid freezing and thawing can be obtained without any temperature gradient by using use of high pressure processing. Increased water absorption rate and reduced cooking time for beans can be obtained even pre cooked rice for microwave readiness. So, all these can be obtained by high pressure processing all these effects can be done by having appropriate high pressure processing. Let us see that is the how this uh, pressure shift of freezing that is the high pressure application of high pressure helps in this process. The pressure shift of freezing involves reducing the temperature of a food sample which is cooled to around 20 degree Celsius at 200 mega Pascal having water in liquid state is held in an high pressure vessel whose temperature is regulated at sub zero temperature under pressure and then after certain time the it is depressurized to atmospheric pressure. So, when it is depressurized the sample undergoes temperature changes that is there is a sudden change in the temperature of the sample and it comes to the phase change temperature that is the phase change from water to ice at the current pressure like you can see here in this figure right that is this uh, is there ice phase 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and it is in this liquid phase. So, maybe at uh, 600 uh, mega Pascal that is even minus 3 or it is depressurized. So, its temperature will come to that uh, stage where the water will be converted into ice instantaneously. So, this ice formation is instantaneous and homogeneous throughout the whole volume of the product because of the high degree of super cooling reached on the release of the pressure. And this is generally especially useful for freezing of the foods that is large size foods, foods with larger dimension and in which a uniform ice crystal distribution is required. So, by this comparatively in higher food materials we can get uniformly frozen and that to the ice crystals of uniform size may be found in these products. Another I told you a high pressure thawing, thawing is the reverse of the freezing that is the frozen food is taken out of the frozen environment and put to certain conditions to change the ice to water right. Normally that is heat treatment is used in one or the other form, but this these heat treatments are associated with the changes in the characteristics physical characteristics etcetera of the food material. So, in this case here high pressure processing that is the becomes a very good useful tool. So, high pressure thawing there is a it is a introduction of a pressure related latent heat here is used to phase change and thawing under high pressure preserves the food quality and also reduces the thawing times which are the problems in the normal or conventional thawing processes. In pressure assisted thawing the phase transition that is from ice to water occurs at a constant pressure by increasing the temperature. Whereas, in the case of pressure induced thawing 
the phase change is initiated by a pressure change and proceeds at a constant temperature. Another application is the high pressure non frozen storage and in this process significant energy savings can be done using storage under high pressure rather than in the freezing under pressure and the product changes due to freezing and thawing effects can be avoided. Raw pork when it was stored under pressure right there were no drip losses were seen particularly after thawing. The count of most of the microorganisms in meat samples are reduced by low temperature storage under pressure and in some cases this uh, reduction in the microbial count is lower than that is obtained by the freezing processes. Now, we come towards the end of the lecture like by summarizing that is benefits of the high pressure processing. It has immense benefits for both the consumers as well as the industry for consumers it provides the avenues for minimally processed foods with no added preservatives. It makes available high quality beverages such as fruits, juices etcetera, improved digestibility of milk for infants particularly lactose intolerant in fact etcetera. There might there are reports certain that is the there are changes in the lactose. So, it uh, becomes useful for those or uh, its digestibility of the milk is improved increased choice of the products are there and more stable products and novel dairy products. For the industry high pressure processing provides avenues for improved process efficiency opportunities for development of new products and intermediates, improved product safety and quality that is it has a longer shelf life. Of course, products that meet the consumer demand for more natural like products that can be obtained easily by this process like high pressure processing and of course, design improvements might be okay, that is we should get we should have suitable type of equipment etcetera for uh, both for solid as well as liquid type of food. There are certain issues and challenges in the high pressure processing and of course, this should be solved. and I am sure that is, is the interest which uh, this process has generated among the world academic fraternities and the industry definitely these issues will be would be resolved. The important issue is the heat transfer under high pressure and process inhomogeneity in many cases it is found. There is main difficulty in monitoring or modeling heat transfer in high pressure process is the lack of data on thermophysical properties under pressure. Regarding the pressure non-uniformity is another important issue There is more research is needed to evaluate press pressure uniformity particularly in the pressure vessels of larger volumes. And the assumptions that is the isostatic rule that is throughout the process the pressure generation is instant and it is uniformly distributed. It is also not well accepted by the entire academic community or by the industry because the change in the density at the geometric center of the food may experience different pressure. So, all these issues need to be resolved by conducting proper studies. The other important issue is the compressing compression heating of the food materials. All compressible substances change temperature during physical compression and it is an unavoidable thermodynamic effect. The temperature of pressure transmitting fluid will also change 
after the compression depending upon its own thermal properties and it will influence obviously the temperature of the sample. So, change in the pressure transmitting fluid temperature as a result of the compression heating and subsequent heat transfer should be considered in the process modeling particularly the process for microbial inactivation for enzymatic inactivation in not many literature reports these things are considered during modeling. So, properties of the food materials under pressure because this becomes very important for having of course, proper uh, modeling of the engineering modeling of the process as well as development of suitable equipments and that of course, this is a determination of the properties of the food under high pressure is a complex task and practically nil or not much data exist in this regard. So, these need to be our challenges need to be properly understood properly resolved. So, as this process becomes a completely fail proof process and completely safe process for the destroying undesirable factors in food for improving its functionality for extending the self life of the food without causing any alteration in the sensory and other attributes. And this high pressure processing has a great potential for application in the food industry. Thank you.